Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, we are going to talk about Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala's latest stock portfolio. So I'm going to break apart his portfolio for you. I'm going to talk about some of the key points that I observed from his style of investing in the market right now. What are some of the recent moves that he has made? What stocks he has purchased, sold? We will have a discussion around it. And more importantly, what is it that we can learn from him? Because there are so many lessons that we can learn from him. His portfolio and style of investing has beaten the market time and again. So very, very important lessons for all of us. And hopefully it will help us improve our investing style. And more importantly, it would allow us to scout some of the opportunities. So I'm going to talk about some of the key stocks that he has added to his portfolio. So let us get the discussion started. And in case you're not an ace investor like Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala and are just starting your stock market journey, then small cases are a wonderful platform for you to start your investment journey. They allow you to do theme-based investment. So I have pulled out some of my favorite small cases and I'm linking it down in the description box. So in case you're a beginner or an intermediate level player in the stock market, then definitely look at these small cases. So let us kickstart our discussion. And first and foremost, you can easily see from this graph that Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala's portfolio is roughly 31,000 crore, huge portfolio. And he has a major position on his banking and finance sector and other is apparel and accessory sector. Now why he has done it, let me break it down for you. First and foremost, and I keep talking about this hypothesis that if India has to grow, then the banking and finance industry has to grow with it. Over the last couple of years, we have seen so much action in the fintech world in India. Some of the best funded startups in India right now are coming out from the fintech domain. So a lot of work is being done in the fintech domain. That's part A. Part B is India's growth story that it is almost given that India's per capita GDP is going to go up from 2000 US dollars to roughly 4000 US dollars. So what would that lead to? It will lead to something called as discretionary income. So discretionary income simply means that once your basic needs are met, then you start thinking about investing it. Then you give your money to bank FDs, mutual funds, etc, etc. So that only happens when there is discretionary income in the economy. And we are aggressively moving towards the point where Indians will have slightly more discretionary income and therefore banks and finance sector are set to grow. Even my India portfolio is roughly 50% banking and finance stocks. Again, not an investment advice that you should also create similar portfolio. I'm just helping you understand the rationale why certain investors are designing their portfolio in a certain manner. Now very quickly touching upon the fact that why does he have such a big position in apparel and accessories? My hypothesis here is that a large chunk of his portfolio is made up of Titan. I will also show you the numbers, which he has purchased years back. And now it has become one of his multi bagger stocks and he still continues to hold big position in Titan. So by default, it ends up making a big part of his portfolio. Let me also show you the numbers very quickly. So if you see from this chart, you can categorically see that he holds the most position in a company called as Titan. And his portfolio is almost one third Titan, so to say, because we looked at the size of the portfolio, approximately 31,000 crore. And he has Titan worth 11,000 crore. So highly concentrated portfolio from that particular perspective. If you go down the list, you will see that he has taken a big position in a healthcare company called as Star Health. He has also purchased Metro brands. So I will talk about some of these stocks subsequently on the video. But before that, there is one important point that I would like to discuss with you by taking you to the overall dynamics of Mr. Junjunwala's portfolio. And here is what I would draw your attention to. So if you take a look at the portfolio size in March of 2022, his portfolio size was roughly 33,000 crore. But if you go to March of 2021, his portfolio size was roughly 16,000 crore. So almost half. So what exactly happened? So two things played out and this is not public information per se. I'm drawing my own inferences here. So the first thing that happened was that of course, like everyone else, even his portfolio was suffering. So it must have shrunk down a little bit. And after March 2021, if we take a one year viewpoint, what has happened is that there has been a significant correction in the market also. So I'm assuming that he would have been sitting on a lot of cash, which he now would have deployed in March 2022. So the important point to note is that from time to time, Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala sells his stocks, he sits on cash and then redeploys that capital. Even Mr. Warren Buffett has been doing the same. If you want, I will make a separate video on Mr. Warren Buffett's portfolio also. But this is a very important point and learning for all of us that we should have some money in cash in order to take advantage of falling markets. So the third key point about Mr. Junjunwala's portfolio can be analyzed by looking at these charts. 
This shows the portfolio difference between June 2022 quarter, this is the latest one, and the last quarter, which is March 2022. So let us take a look at what has apparently changed during this time from an overall portfolio perspective. One is that he might have reduced his position in banking stocks a little bit. So that's one. Second key thing that has he changed anything when it comes to accessories? Please do not go by textiles, go by accessories because this is pretty much Titan here, right? So he has not changed anything on Titan per se, but he has moved around with this part of his portfolio, right? For example, he has increased his positions in autos. He has increased his position in retail segment stocks. This is a very important observation. So now let me structure the next part of the video talking about specific bets that he has taken and what is one key stock that he has added on his portfolio very recently. So one key stock that Mr. Junjunwala has added this quarter on his portfolio is called as Escorts Kubata and it was previously known as Escorts. It has changed its name. So it's Escort Kubata and basically what kind of a company is it? It is an automotive manufacturing firm. More specifically, it is a highly agriculture dependent business. Why? Because it is primarily into tractor manufacturing or agricultural equipment manufacturing. So let me show you some data to help you develop a consolidated understanding about this stock. And then you could make a call whether it would make sense for you to take a position in it or not. So let me quickly show you the product wise breakup of Escorts Kubata. So what you will notice is that majority of their business, almost 77% of the business comes from EAM, which is Escorts Agricultural Machinery. So this is point one. Point two, if you take a look at their customer segment, again, you will figure out that, hey, they are highly dependent on agriculture. Almost 77% of their customer base is into agricultural domain. Third point, if you take a look at their operating profit breakup, again, 90% of their money is made through agri-machinery sector. So it is a highly dependent agricultural stock. If the agricultural sector goes up, the demand of tractor goes up, then something like escorts will do well. If the agri-sector is not doing well, then escorts will do fairly bad. So you can see from this chart that Mr. Rakesh Jinjanwala has invested roughly 302 crore rupee into this particular company. So this is not a small amount even from his portfolio standpoint. So he has taken a decent bet on this company. Should you do the same? I don't know. Am I doing the same? I will not tell you, but I will give you some basic information so that you can make a more informed call. If you want to do a copycat investing of Mr. Rakesh Janjanwala, feel free to do it. But please listen to these counter arguments also. So as we discussed that Escorts is highly dependent on the agricultural sector, what we need to remember is that first and foremost, and you can see this from the graphic, that Escorts has been losing the market share when it comes to tractor market as well. So this is definitely not a good sign. The second key point is that people have been very bullish about the agricultural sector because it has not been performing very well over the last couple of years due to COVID, loss of capital to farmers, etc, etc. This year it is expected that monsoons are going to be good and the agricultural sector will grow. And you can again see this from this snippet. But even if you scroll through the article, what the article says is that the agricultural sector is likely to grow at 4%. So that growth rate is not super impressive to begin with. Now comes the most important part of this analysis, which is a slightly longer term analysis. And one of the key points has been highlighted by Dr. Raghuram Rajan on his latest paper that he has published. So this is what he ends up saying. And I will read paragraph three from this page that another headwind coming from poorer countries where lower middle class households have suffered tremendously through the pandemic. And and now from food and fuel price inflation. Many children have missed school and are likely to drop out, permanently impairing their earning potential and the skill base of the labor force more broadly. Meanwhile, deglobalization has been impacting the world. So what he's net net saying is that due to high inflation and all the turmoil that we are seeing in the world, supply chain disruption, companies stirring up nationalistic feeling, building only local supply chains, not global supply chains, countries de-associating themselves. For example, Russia and China are forming a gang and US is again. So world trade is going to suffer from that perspective and it is the people who are at the base of the pyramid they are going to suffer the most so think about it this way that do you see indian farmers suffering from all these changes that dr rajan is speaking about or do you see them suffering so i personally see them suffering unfortunately at least in the short to mid term why is that the case? And, and a middle class proxy would be a great analysis. For example, I've been speaking quite extensively about the fact that consumer durables is going to make a comeback simply because of the fact that the spending power of the middle class is going up. Because think about it this way again, that due to pandemic, supply side shock and bunch of other negative things, it was the middle class that was suffering and of course the lower middle class. 
and they were postponing their decision to buy consumer durables like fridge ac tv etc etc now the demand is coming back up which is a good sign so my hypothesis is that first the middle class recovery will happen and then the recovery in the rural segment will start taking place so this might take a significantly longer time and therefore i am not bullish about escorts at least in the short term now the second key stock that i am going to speak about is the metro brand mr rakesh junjunwala has taken significant stake in this particular stock you can see this from the chart here and here are some key points that you need to know about the company so what exactly is it that metro brand does so it is a retail company and basically it creates in house brands for example mochi is a brand crocs is a brand so these are some of the prominent brands that are owned by the metro brands the second key point that you should know about the company is that they follow something called as coco model so coco model means company operated company owned now this is a very important point because there are other big players in the retail segment for example amazon is there reliance retail is there now these companies are focusing quite aggressively on their digital channels but on the other side metro brands has a series of physical stores yes they are selling some stuff online no doubt about that but their primary bread and butter are multi brand outlet stores on these multi brand outlet stores what they typically do is that they stock a bunch of different brands and they integrate their own brands on it which is a good play and a very profitable play and let me show that to you by taking you to the finances of the firm so here you can categorically see that the operating profit margin of the company has been growing year on year why is that the case simply because they are doing product substitution so product substitution simply means that they will open a multi brand outlet they will have 50 brands now 45 of the brands would not be their own brands it would only be five brands but as the year progresses out of those 50 brands they will end up bringing 20 30 of their own brands so as a result their products end up getting a lot of exposure and they are making the most money from the products that they are generating and building in house now the final positive point that i will tell you about this company is and you can go to the pr analysis and take a look at it so what you will see is that its pe is at roughly 63 and if you compare it to its competitors the pe is relatively on the lower side and this is a growing company which is aggressively expanding so you stand to make a lot of money in case you are taking a bet on this particular stock am i taking a bet on this particular stock maybe maybe not you guess in the comment section but let me very quickly speak about the problems associated with this stock so first and foremost what you will see is that this is a very high debt company they have almost 55% of the debt on their books and they are taking this debt in order to expand their business but if you study their balance sheet what you will figure out is that the rate of fixed asset or fixed asset acquisition or expansion of fixed asset is not that high compared to the rate at which their debt has gone up which is a slightly worrying sign for me and my theory behind this is the following that basically if you think about metro brands business model what they are doing is and you can correct me in the comment box so i feel that they are renting out a lot of stores now in the last couple of years the discount rates were available if you were a renter now the real estate market is coming back up so unless they are physically owning these stores which i do not think is the case i'll have to do further analysis on it but if they are renting these stores and whatever new contracts that they are signing up and if their long term lease is not there then it becomes a problem for them because it will eat into their profit margins because the real estate prices as of now are going up so this becomes like a big problem for a brand like metro because now they will have a difficult time in terms of expanding their presence there is a reason why amazon or reliance mart are going the digital way why because the profit margins through digital channels are much higher compared to physical store margins the second key problem is their competition that they are going to compete with amazon they are going to compete with reliance retail these are giant companies with very deep pockets and we don't know how this competition will shape now let's move on to the next stock and now we will talk about a very interesting stock from mr junjunwala's portfolio which is mandana retail or it is listed as heads up venture limited so this company has a very interesting story that back in 2014 15 it started working with salman khan foundation so salman khan bhai right so that salman khan we are talking about not the salman khan educator so he is building this brand called as being human so during that time mr junjunwala invested in this company now unfortunately that contract has been withdrawn from this particular company so salman bhai said that okay enough i am going to do this stuff on my own and unfortunately after that this company has not seen much growth now the reason why i am telling you this story is that mr junjunwala has cut his stock in this particular venture he believed in this venture for a very long period of time and now he has cut significant stake in this particular company very important point for us to note that even big investors can go wrong with their investments we should not bet as retail investors on a company which is dependent on one single entity for its contract so this becomes a problem and this is a cautionary tale that we should remember that even mr junjunwala can go wrong 
But here is the most interesting thing about this particular exercise that even when Mr. Junjunwala was incorrect about the company, look at the percentage of money that you would have invested in this company. And for this, just quickly scroll through it. So this is the total value of the investments that he has made across different companies. And here you can't even see that how much money he has invested here. So this was a very, very small bet for him. It is like saying that you have a one crore portfolio and you might have went and invested like 10,000 rupees on it. So learn from that, that if you're trying to identify multi-bagger stocks, there is nothing wrong. You should take bets on these type of companies, but invest little bit of sensible amount only. Now he is taking a similar bet on a company called as Leading Leasing Financials. I will leave it up to your judgment whether you should be investing in this company or not investing. But let me give you a very quick analysis of this company. So you can see that the company has a very high debt, almost 500% debt on its books. So what is it that the company does? It is into lending business. So it is okay that a company has very high debt because banking and finance companies tend to have high debt because that is the money that they need in order to run the operations. Nothing wrong there. But here is the primary problem with the company that the company has been operational for years. But take a look at its last one decade growth that its sales was roughly 6 lakh rupees in 2011. Now it is at 1.43 crore rupee. These are like very sad numbers for a listed company. Let us take a look at more document related information here that if you take a look at and try to analyze their annual reports, you will not find any relevant information. In fact, I could not find a lot of information on this company. The company management does not do too many con calls. Again, you will find very limited information about this company on the internet if you try to Google it. Hardly any information. So now, why did I pick this stock to talk about? Because this is a speculative investment. So please go again to the previous stock story that I was telling you that Mr. Junjunwala himself invests very little money in speculative investment. This looks like a speculative investment. So if you want to play such speculative game, it is completely okay to do it, but do it with very little capital. So this brings us to the summary of the entire video and what are some of the key lessons that I'm personally taking away from Mr. Junjunwala's investing style. So first and foremost, it is very important to have your concentrated portfolio, which is the main portfolio so for Mr. Junjunwala. So these would be companies like Metro Brand, Titan, etc. So this is his core portfolio. And then he invests very little money in speculative investments. Point number two, that whenever he is doing speculative investments, he would invest in those companies very, very early and very little amount. So this way he gets massive returns on whichever speculative investments are winning. Third and finally, like every smart investor, you should be timing the market. Again, go back to the start of the video. I spoke about the fact that hey, in March of 2021, his portfolio size was roughly 16,000 crore. Now it is close to 32,000 crore. Why that difference? Because he would have been sitting on a lot of cash during the last one year, which he has deployed very, very intelligently. A lot of other investors have also done it. So accordingly, we should learn as retail investors to manage our cash positions as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press the like button and I will see you soon.